Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Diana Nisha binti Johari from Four Signs Agama and I study at SMK Rawang. I started reading since I was in secondary school. Last year, I fell in love with this genre which is thriller. The book that made me realize I have such great love for this genre is called A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This book was written by Holly Jackson and was published in 2019. Pippa Fitzamobi, also known as Pip, is a teenager who lives in Little Kilton. In the summer before her senior year of high school, she started to work on her extended project qualification. She chooses to do a research about the murder case of Andy Bell which happened in Little Kilton five years ago. However, she intends to do an investigatory attempt to prove Sal Singh's innocence in the accusation that he murdered Andy Bell and disposed of her body. Pip eventually teams up with Sal's brother, Ravi Singh, in her investigation. She determines that whatever happened to Andy occurred on Friday, April 18, 2014, between 10.40pm and 12.45am. A few days later, Sal was found dead, presumably having died by suicide, especially after he sent a confession text. This solidifies his guilt in seemingly everyone's mind but Pip's. Through interviews with various people in Andy's life, Pip learned several facts relating to Andy. Number one, she was involved with a secret older man. Number two, she bought drugs from a man named Howie Bowers and sold them at house parties. And number three, she bullied a girl named Natalie De Silva into dropping out of school. Several suspects also begin to emerge, all interconnected in different ways. For example, Mr. Elliot Ward, Pip's best friend's father and her history teacher had a tense relationship with Andy. In addition, Andy's car was discovered on Howie Bowser Street. All the players in the story had opportunity and motive to be involved in Andy's disappearance. Throughout her investigation, Pip confronts dangerous characters as well as going undercover. She also received several threatening notes telling her to stop her investigation. Fast forward to the climax of the story, Pip discovers that Mr. Ward has a secret relationship with Andy. Mr. Ward admits in trying to get to stop but ended up arguing with her. Andy eventually hit her head on his desk. Lightly concussed, Andy vanished and Mr. Ward feared that if she was found, all his secrets would be revealed. He therefore framed Sal for her murder and made it seem as if Sal died by suicide. He later spotted a girl walking down the street in a confused state. He took her and hid her in the attic of his old home where she has been for the past five years. Mr. Ward was arrested, but Pip quickly realizes that the girl he has been keeping captive is in fact not Andy Bell, but a girl he confused for her. After more investigation, Pip determines that Andy's sister, Becca Bell, disposed of her body in a septic tank at an old farmhouse. The real story behind Andy's death is when Andy came home that night and Becca tried to tell her that she was drunk and assaulted but Andy didn't care. Becca got angry and they argued. Andy eventually started convulsing and choked on her own vomit. When confronted, Becca attempts to kill Pip but is saved by Ravi and her father. This book concludes with Pip's capstone presentation where she turns her finger on Little Kilton for their role in judging Sal before all the facts were out. This book gives me a lot of thrill and excitement since it has plots even from the beginning of the story. Maybe it's not that you don't like reading, it's just that you haven't found a suitable genre for you to read. So take your time and read different types of books so that you can find a lovable genre for yourself and for you to enjoy to read.